let's take a look at the diagnostics readings that are useful on the Green Star rate controller with the liquid application system. We can look at these screens when we are sitting still or when we are running a diagnostic test or when we are applying in the field. From the run screen, press diagnostics, then the readings tab. The first diagnostic screen is the hardware software screen. The most important thing here is the software version number at the bottom. It is usually a good idea to update the software annually. The software can be downloaded from the John Deere Stellar Support website and placed on a USB stick for installation. If we press the pull down menu, the next screen we want to look at is the delivery system. This is the go-to screen to see what is happening with the system. The flow meter hertz shows the number of pulses per second being received from the flow meter. This should be stable within a narrow range on a normal pass across the field. If the flow meter readings are jumping around, check the PWM duty cycle at the bottom of the screen. If the PWM duty cycle is bouncing around, it can be hard to tell which came first, the erratic PWM duty cycle or the jumping flow pulses. The PWM duty cycle could be jumping around because it is chasing an erratic flow reading, trying to even it out, or it could be jumping around because the valve calibration number is too aggressive and it overshoots back and forth across the target rate. To check this, run the system manually from Diagnostics, Test, Calibrate PWM Limits. Start the test and hold the plus button until the flow is close to the flow you need in the field. Go to the delivery system screen. The PWM duty cycle should be locked in. If the flow meter pulses are jumping around, we have a problem getting a stable flow reading. This could mean we have air in the system going through the flow meter. It could mean we have a bad connection between the flow meter and display, perhaps a loose or corroded pan that is not making good contact, especially as the system bounces through the field. It could mean the flow meter needs to be replaced. Next, we will run the system with nozzle flow check. The system should lock onto the target rate, and the flow meter hertz and PWM duty cycle should be stable on the delivery system screen. If the rate is bouncing around on the nozzle flow check and or in the field with a hydraulic pump, the first thing to look at is the valve calibration in the PWM settings. Try setting the valve cal at 2522. If it is still jumping there, go to 2022 and then 1522. If it locks in there, but seems a little sluggish to adjust, try adjusting the last two numbers such as 2033, 3033, and 4033. To troubleshoot a bouncing rate issue in the field, we need to lock in the PWM duty cycle. First, while going across the field, Go to the delivery system screen to get an idea of where the PWM duty cycle should be. Then turn the master switch off and go to the PWM settings and set the PWM low limit at the duty cycle you observed on the delivery system screen. Set the PWM high limit at one more than that number. This will lock in the PWM duty cycle. Start applying as normal. Look at the delivery system screen. The duty cycle should be locked in as should the flow meter hertz. If the flow meter readings are jumping around, check for error in the system and check for a bad or loose connection in the harnessing to the flow meter. The operator will want to check the delivery system screen routinely while running, even when things are working well, so he has an idea of what normal operation looks like. It's good to know what the PWM duty cycle is on a routine pass, so if that number starts changing, you might be able to catch an issue before the system shuts down. The next screen on the readings tab is the section status. This screen shows which section valves the controller wants on and which ones should be off. Next is the system voltages screen. A typical screen looks like this, approximately 13 volts on the top two, 5 volts on sensor power 1, 2, and 3. The ECU power comes through the 12-pin ISO connector, which goes back to the 9-pin ISO connector at the back of the tractor. The valve power comes through the 2-pin Molex connector, which also goes back to the 9-pin ISO connector. Working parameters shows what the controller thinks the working width at any time is, and what speed it is seeing, and where that speed is coming from. Switch's status shows what the controller is seeing from the master foot switch. 
This should match up with what is shown regarding the master switch on the run screen. In an emergency or for troubleshooting, it is possible to jump across the two pins that constitute the master switch. Sensor status shows the setup and current operation of the pressure sensor. Critical things here are the calibration points. Zero PSI should be zero volts. Be sure the sensor is unplugged when the 50 millivolts for PSI is entered on the pressure sensor calibration setup. The other calibration point should show that 90 PSI, or very close to that, is 4.5 volts. The slope should be 50 on the standard Surefire sensor for liquid, which is a 0 to 5 volt 100 PSI sensor. Get familiar with the diagnostics readings in pre-season setup and keep an eye on these screens while operating in the field. Then if there is an issue, you will be in a better position to diagnose and fix the problem. Thank you.